Hi, I'm here to talk about compression algorithms, and in particular we are going to talk about the Shannon-Fano encoding algorithm and the Huffman encoding algorithm. Both are pretty closely related, and that's why we are doing both in the same video. I believe if you look at our other videos, we've already done one on Huffman encoding, but this could be a supplementary video for you. First off, about compression algorithms. If you don't know what they are, you know everything on the computer is made up of data. All your music files, all your video files, all your image files, all your text files, you need some way to store that. And uncompressed data, if you don't compress it, then it probably takes up a lot more space than you would think it would. E even though hardware is getting better, it is getting cheaper, you could probably buy a hard drive that stores a lot of memory today for a very cheap. Algorithms are used to reduce the data size and, and both the evolution of hardware being cheaper and of the algorithms getting better through that we can find uh, improvements much more quickly with technology. As an example just one minute of uncompressed HD video like 1080p video could be over one gigabyte. Imagine that. Uh, Blu-ray discs that store 1080p video are usually about 25 gigabytes or 50 gigabytes. So if one minute of that video would only would be one gigabyte, how in the world do we store an entire movie on one disk? Well, that's why compression algorithms are so important. There are many different types of algorithms that you could use for compression, and it depends on the data, it depends on uh, the uh, the type of data and as different algorithm, al algorithms will work better uh, depending on the image. For example, if you have one image that's really detailed and has a lot of detail in it, then one algorithm may work better th th than another. But on the other hand, if you had an image that was only had four colors in it, then again, the algorithms that you might use might be different. And Anyway, just for this video, we are going to talk about the two algorithms. The first one is Shannon-Fano algorithm. It is an encoding algorithm that replaces the binary representation of data based on how often certain symbols appear in the file. Again, everything is made up of data, so you could think of everything being made up of literally bits and bytes, ones and zeros, on and off, and, and that's for the most part that's true. It, it, everything from text is made up of this, uh, colors and uh, images made up of this, and so on. Anyway, this algorithm builds a tree to represent how to code each symbol using only ones and zeros based on the probability of that symbol appearing based on the data that you are given. And in the end, this uh, changes the, the bits that are actually in the file to help optimize the final file size. The idea is that we want to reduce the number of bits that are used to represent the image at the end or the data at the end. And we also have the Huffman coding algorithm that we will talk about today. It's also an encoding algorithm that replaces the binary represent representation of data based on how often certain symbols appear in the file. And it, to do this, it builds a tree to represent how to code each symbol using ones and zeros based on the probability of each symbol appearing to help optimize the final file size. You probably noticed something here. As you could tell, the Shannon-Fano algorithm and the Huffman coding algorithm are very similar, and a lot of people get confused about what exactly the difference is. The best way to describe the difference is that the Shannon-Fano is a top-down algorithm, and it makes an encoding tree from top down, but the Huffman encoding algorithm makes a encoding tree from the bottom up. This might not seem like a big deal, but it really is. And the encoding uh, trees from both algorithms may be very different at the end. They may be similar, but they may be different. Typically, the Huffman coding algorithm generates the optimal code, and Sh Shannon Fano does not always do this. And because of this, Shannon Fano is not used very often today. Typically, you would just use the Huffman coding algorithm. Uh, although some classes and some people still teach the Sh Shannon Fano algorithm just for. Uh, academic purposes. Okay, let's look at an example. We want to encode the following sentence here. Hello world. It's a simple string, not very long, but if you did not 
uh, encode it, if you did not optimize it, if you did not compress this uh, string, we would have to encode it with regular ASCII uh, characters. Each character would take up eight binary bits. Uh, the reason that is is because the eight bits could use uh, make up 256 unique characters. And in the end, it would encode to something like this. So eight bits per character, that's a lot. And look at that long string that would make up. That's 88 binary bits just for two words, for 11 characters. That, that's a little excessive. Granted, this is made using binary bits, and that's why it's so long, but we could reduce that, and so we will. First, we want to find the probability of each character appearing in the sentence based on this sentence. You, you can see H, e, uh, H and E don't appear very often, they only appear once. L appears the most often, O and uh, the space appears... Uh, uh, sorry, that's a typo. Uh, the space should only appear once. Uh, but but the probability is still the same there. And you get the idea. So we have the probability here of all the different characters appearing. L is the most common, and O is the second common. So hopefully those should take up less space than before. And hopefully, because we aren't using that many characters at all in this one strain, uh, every character should take up less space than it did before. Okay, let's begin with the Shannon Fano algorithm. Rem remembering what the probabilities are here, we want to make a binary tree to recode these characters from top down, such that the characters are most likely to use less, as few bits as possible. To keep the tree as balanced as possible, we make it such that each branch from top to bottom, from each node, will represent roughly 50% of the chance of the character coming up. That means that when we make the tree, we want to keep it as balanced as possible as we go down. So let's begin. From the start of the tree, we want to have a left node and a right node, and I have that here. In the left node, I have H, E, L, and space combined, and all that together would make up a probability of roughly 54%. The other one is O, W, R, D, and that would make up roughly 45%. Now the strings that you put on each node may be very different. You could make a whole bunch of different combinations here, and a whole bunch of combinations over here, and each side would be roughly 50%. And it doesn't really matter on what you put there, as long as you trace it properly. At the end, it should be about the same. Uh, at the end, it's the number of bits that actually matters that we end up using to encode the final algorithm. And that's the most important part. And if we continue in the same way, uh, here we have four different characters. If we uh, branch that off again, L would come here, and then the rest, and then here we would branch off further. We want to branch off everything until we only have one character per leaf. And as we do that, we want to uh, put a b bit, either 0 or 1, down along the way. And if you do that again, on the other side, this is the entire tree. And what we have here is what our bit, uh, characters would be represented as binary bits using this encoding algorithm. Because we have zeros and ones all the way down, we can trace that to find out what one would be worth. So for example, H, if I went to find where H was, it's over here. So it would be 0, 1, 0, and that would be what H is now. And that's what we have here on the table. And E, again, would be similar. It's down here, so I go 0, 1, 1, 0. And that's what I have here again. So over here on the table, we have a bunch of new ways to represent these characters. And that's how we would encode it. And so the final string here would be this. It's only 30, 32 bits instead of 88 bits. That's a huge reduction in the data size. And notice that the symbols that had that appeared the most often with the highest probability have less uh, rep, uh, a smaller representation. They take up less bits. For example, O and L, those were the most common ones, and those only take up two bits compared to everyone else, which takes more. So that that's what, part of why this works so well. Now let's repeat this with the Huffman uh, coding algorithm. The, the difference here is that we are going to make the tree again from top down, uh, from bottom up, sorry, bottom up. 
uh, it's again the tree could be a little bit different depending on how you make the branch but to do it from bottom up we start by looking at all the different uh, probabilities here in the table and you want to combine the l two smallest that are in the table so in this case r and w and uh, d and the space and e and h are all the same probability and, and they are all the lowest so in this case you would just take the two any two that are the smallest and combine them as one node tree over here and then you would combine them as you do that so okay we have that part of the tree now again we will take the two smallest uh, characters remaining these two are combined so that's not the smallest anymore but these two here are still it would still make up the smallest combined node so we would make that over here and you can see we are combining the characters as we go along and combining their probabilities as we go along so as we keep going we should be able to make a tree that is for the most part balanced and you get the idea so it looks a little bit different than before but the idea is the same that you would have zeros and ones from each branch as you go down to tell you how you would represent these different characters for example H would be 0 0 0 0 E would be over here it's 0 0 0 1 you get the idea and again L and O are both the least or sorry L and O are the most likely so they take up the least amount of bits technically O actually takes up the same number of bits as several other characters uh, but even still this is considered to be the optimal version of this algorithm so in the end we get this string which is 32 bits instead of 88 bits which is about 36 percent of the original data data size that's a huge reduction so to end with the top one here this is a string that we got from the Shannon Fano algorithm the bottom one here is the Huffman coding algorithm in the end in this case both ended up giving us the same amount of reduction but a different uh, different uh, strings would do, uh, give you different results uh, you could even see up here the amount of bits that were used to represent H are both different and the bits that represent E are different and so on so you can see from here the algorithms are different even though here it give you it gives you roughly the same result uh, for practice you might want to try this example over here uh, if you have just five characters and these are the probabilities of the characters try to trace again to see what how you encode those using both Shannon Fano and Huffman coding and I think you should get different uh, character lengths from that so uh, give it a try and remember the, the both algorithms may be traced multiple different way, ways but you should be able to get the same optimization at the end and that's the most important thing thank you for watching